Hello and welcome back to Diesel Rail Car Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me in today's video. Last time out, I went through my first impressions of this title. First time into it, I started driving. Uh, I drove this particular run on the, is it this the West, Westford? Westford, I've got to go back and check it. Westford's. Uh, Westford's route, so some fictional route. Uh, all of this is based on, on British railways, which is really good, and it has actual British trains. Uh, but I, I tried this short suburban down 15, uh, which was a route between Haverford West Down Slow and uh, Evertonham, or Everton maybe, however it's going to be pronounced, uh, stopping at Upper Sundernow. So that was what I did last time. Now, in this video, I thought I'd do this one. It's a six car train, it's a class 37, so a completely different locomotive, and it is a semi fast, uh, semi fast run. So if we click on it and go normal scenario, scenario you will see that is, that's the train and those are the carriages. And we are going to be starting apparently at Portal 1, stopping at Shelton uh, Bryan and then continuing off at Portal 2. Now, I do not know if this means that the train is going to be um, in a state where it is travelling, where it's just ready to travel. If it is in that state, it may be slightly concerning for, for my controls because I noticed that with the controls, it, it does take a little bit of a... Uh, messing around with the axes to get them working but it may be okay so make sure you stay tuned for my first journey on the class 37 this is still technically i suppose a first impressions video uh, and i'll be looking at how a different locomotive runs with these uh, mark one carriages and what looks like a, a brake van at the back a great western railway brake van at the back should be interesting make sure you stay tuned let's roll the title credits and get started okay so i was right that um this would this would start this would start me off at uh in a in a form where the train is still going apparently the reverser i've got in neutral so let me sort all of this out and i think there we go we should be okay okay we are we are driving the train at a rather large train what does this one look like inside uh, does this have light lighting is a must as I said in the last video, lighting could be a problem here, and it is definitely difficult to see all of these here. So we've got our reverse handle, our power handle, and then we've got our brakes. I'm assuming that's, yep, that's the local brake. I'll keep that off. Handbrake is definitely off. Get, get on the brakes a little. What brake do I now have on? There we go. It's a little better. So we're just cruising along. We, it looks like we are going to be passing somewhere, although there is a red signal coming up. So I'm going to have to be concerned about that. We are coasting. There's no gears in this. Uh, Everything seems okay. I'm just waiting for the for the issue with the signal. Nope, the signals are green. That's the AWS. Let's go ahead and have a look at this tray. Uh, what's it again? Shift and eight, I think. That allows me to to uh, move around. Yes, it is. Let's try and get a, a nice screenshot of this train again. Same as same issues as last time. Lighting is perhaps something that needs to be. Lighting is something that perhaps needs to be worked upon. But all in all, I mean, this is this is all right. 
Uh, I wonder what I wonder what motion blur would look like with this. No, the motion blur is not too bad either. Let's go back in anyway and have a look at what speed we're doing because I did feel like we were slowing down a little. There's a signal box just there. Let's go ahead and accelerate. So this is actually a pretty simple, easy route to do. Uh, so this is going to be one where I can look around a little bit more uh, outside of, of the train. I think that is something I'm going to be able to do. And certainly we get to hear the outside of the train a little bit more, so you'll hear as I bring this up. There's the, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, I've forgotten what it's called. Uh, thrash? Maybe? Something like that. Somebody will correct me in the comments with that. Uh, lovely valley, that's quite well done. Or oh, say valley a little uh, cut. That looks excellent. That looks very realistic. It just looks like um, an area of maybe just some sort of hilly area. But that that does look very very realistic. I am impressed. I am very impressed with with this. Again. So, same as what I said in the first video, I think the trains and the carriages, locomotives, they need, they need some, some improvement. In general, the exterior is pretty good uh, overall. This is strange, but okay. Uh, overall, this is pretty good. Nothing, nothing out of the out of the ordinary, nothing too, nothing too out of place, um, looking around. Lighting is actually really good. I would say the lighting is, is really, really good. Um, the downsides to the scenery, I think maybe level of detail models a little, I think I'm going uphill here, given this I'm having to really kick in the throttle a bit. Although we are coming up to Shelton Bryan, so I'm going to have to figure out how to stop this train because I have no idea how quickly this train will stop. It's a bigger train, it has six carriages. So at this point, I think, let's go ahead and cut the throttle. I'm going to start applying the brakes ever so slightly here. And the train is slowing down, great. So I'm applying them a little bit more. There we go, I can see the station ahead of me. So I should be really entering the station at no more than 20, 25 miles per hour. I'm going to ease off the brakes a bit. I think we are, we are doing quite well. I think I learnt that rule of thumb, that something at like 25 miles per hour entering a station and, and you know you're okay. Now as long as you enter at 25, you, you know you're doing okay. And we are going to have to go all the way to the end of the platform in this one. So I will just ease it through down to the end. And I think we are, I think we're all right. We're just very, very lightly tapping the brake. And we are a little bit early anyway, surprisingly. And I think we're supposed to stop here, six car stop. There we go. Okay, and we are stopped. Not too bad, not too bad at all. So again, lighting, uh, exterior lighting, 
really good. I'm really hoping this isn't a single source light. I've not yet seen a light come on. Um, if this is a single source light, that could be a problem. And that, that would be quite a big problem, actually. Uh, because one of the key things I, I would say in, in a rail simulator is having the light. Um, there's another train coming in. How, how nice. How, how lovely to see. Where are you going? Are you just passing through or stopping? The, the, the fact that there are other trains running through this is also a really, really cool thing. Now that, that one is just passing through. And we are well within within the station platform. We were supposed to stop at the six car sign and astoundingly, I have. We, we, we have six cars, so this is a six car stop. And somehow I've managed to do that. Let's have a, whilst we're looking around, let's have a quick look around at this village. We've got some semi-detached houses. Oh, cannot go too, cannot go too far. Some terraced houses, Victorian terraced houses. Perhaps they could do with a bit of work. They all look like corner houses. That is not right. They should be more like these, or certainly like these. Um, the other side, so this is a, a small stop, small station. Not that many houses. I'm sure a train comes along here a couple of times a, a day. Well, it wouldn't be a couple of times a day. It might be it comes along in the morning, then later in the afternoon. So this is the morning train. Maybe another train comes along a few hours later. Maybe every few hours you might get a train here as opposed to every half an hour. That probably needs to be smoothed out a little. I can understand why that's happened because Guess what? It happens in transport fever when, when you connect nodes like that. It, it tries to make these sorts of bumps. So I can understand that. But overall, for an early access title, this is looking really quite good. But again, I have yet to see a light on. That is, that is my biggest concern at the moment. That and the fact that these interior graphics do need work. That That is for sure. Any buzzer? No buzzer. I heard the whistle. So let's go ahead and go. And we are, we are off and underway. Why is my brake on 1% though? I have no idea why my brake is on 1%. It shouldn't be. Oh, I know what I could do. Something that they do with this, this train sometimes. Maximum power. Yes, they, they do that with this train. I know that. Oh, that would have been nice. a nice place to take a picture. I still don't know why my brake is on 1%. My, my brakes are clearly switched off. The, 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 way, the way I'm moving this, it makes it sound like a... Um, it makes it sound like a Formula 1 car. No, I'm, I'm, I'm amused, I'm getting far too amused about something that should not be amusing in the slightest. Okay, so this train's really picked up at a, an incredible speed. Oh, the brake is finally released. Well, there we go. Maybe it just takes time for the brake to release, I, I don't know. But this has been, this has been a, a, a nice, interesting short video. Um, we're going to be passing a couple of places uh, in a few minutes. And then I do not have to worry about anything. Some more semaphore signals there, and then there's a signal box which is kind of hanging off the edge, so perhaps those things need to be looked at. And you just mess around slightly with the throttle. That was the AWS alarm.
which does not need to be cleared because, well, there isn't anything to clear. Well, why is it telling me air? Uh, I was going to say, why is it telling me target 60 and then doing that? A tiny amount of brake. There we go. Oh, the brake's back to 1% for some reason. I suppose, realistically, would they... Would you get in trouble for doing 61 in a 60, realistically? If your train is... Um, if your train is... Not... I suppose if you, if, you, if you do not have accurate speedometers... I'm just having a look at the speedometer down there. Let's see how accurate that particular speedometer is. This little shake, this engine shake noise, it's quite, quite um, interesting. I'm not sure how realistic that is. And it does seem to be repeating a little, a little too often, but um, it would be interesting. So I'm looking at that speedo and it is reading 60 now, I guess which is about 58 miles per hour. Okay, so just like speedometers in cars, they do have um, a, they do have some leeway. So that, that would make sense. So you cannot actually exceed 60 if you are following, uh, yep, if you are following the, the speed that is on the speedometer, which is fair enough. I think I just saw some, was that volumetric shadows that I just saw? I have no idea. This is nice. Although the... I, I did notice the fence sort of sank into... The fence sank into the ground. So... I guess there, there are a few things that need to be looked into. But certainly for the most part, as, as an early access title, this is quite impressive. That, I will say, as an early access title, this is quite impressive. The, the train does feel like a train, so... And I know that sounds silly, but there are instances in which the trains just feel too... too easy. It's just way too easy to to run. This platform's a very narrow. This is a very narrow platform. Unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to be going any faster than 60. This has been a much more relaxing, easy, uh, easier video as opposed to as opposed to the other ones We're going downhill. Yep, I think we were going downhill. The the other one was more there was a lot more concentration going on working with the gears and all of that. This is this is less to do. Um What's going on? What was that? I have no idea what all of that noise was. There was a cutout in sound and early access. I'm going to say early access. I do wonder if we, we are going to get other rain in here. That would be interesting. Or other weather. So you get rain, snow. Um, if that is the case, then we need working wipers. Which these do not. There's no... That is the wiper control and it does not work. So there are things that do need to be improved. Um, I have no idea how long this is going to be in early access for. Hopefully not too long. It would be nice to see what it, what it is like this time next year. I saw that happening already. 
saw that happening before it happened. The moment, the moment I released the throttle, or, so I released the throttle because I noticed we were accelerating faster than what I thought the throttle should be doing. Um, so I released the throttle and then saw the speed still increase ever so slightly, so I was immediately on the brake. Um, I, suppose, I suppose I'm getting used to, used to this vehicle already. But yes, I think if they focus on on the quality of the textures of the train and, and the modelling of this train next. Uh, oh, we're done. We are done. Uh, that would make it quite, uh, I think that would make it quite impressive. Okay, let's see. Uh, passenger comfort exceeded once. I came to a halt too abruptly. Yes, I noticed that myself. So there was that speed limit six times. Um, I used 95% of the energy that I was going to use. Uh, obviously, it's a tutorial penalty, so quite a decent score, I guess. Uh, there's my exceeding of the speed limit there, just slightly there. That was probably my biggest one, just there. So that was 62. I think I reached 62 miles per hour there. Um, and then we've got all of the hour stopping points uh, or passing points in this case. So we had three pass, pass points, one stopping point. Oh, and the stop was five foot off. It gives gives me that kind of information too. So that's, that's kind of impressive. Well, there we go. A nice short run for for my second part of the first impression. So these two videos together should give you your first impressions. I think this is a really good title. I think there is a lot of work to do, but a lot of potential. The underlying architecture of the title seems to be there. So the engine simulation, the suspension simulation, that all seems to be there. Visually, outside, I know it has had the recent a recent scenery update. I, I looked it up. So that would m make sense why the outside looks quite good, but the inside, the, the interior is... The interiors really do need some work. Um, other features, lighting, wipers, things like that. I think that needs to be a thing. But aside from that, this is turning out to be quite a good simulator. I think I may do some more videos on this. If you want to see some more videos, please remember to click on that thumbs up and the like button, or thumbs up is the like button, to like this video let me know that you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on diesel rail car simulator leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think have you picked this title up what do you think of it what do you want to see in it if you can do so please do consider supporting me on patreon www.patreon.com slash ec gadget your support would be massively appreciated it would really really help me out link to that in the description box below as well as links to my social media and discord so that's instagram and twitter at ec gadget lp and well my discord just click on the link in the description box that is all from me for the second part of my first impressions and i shall see you next time in diesel rail car simulator where i, I may just do another run let's see what other kind of runs i can find on on this particular map of was it westfords westfords oh, it just sounds better if it's just westford but there we go i shall see you next time